Hi, I'm Lou, and today I'm going to show you how to make an apple masher and cider press with a ceiling fan motor and a few plastic buckets. What we really need is the motor inside the fan. So what you're going to have to do is take off the lighting fixture, take off the fan blades, and then take off this decorative shell. There's two pieces, and there's bolts that go in, into it all the way around. Take those off and it'll all come apart and you'll end up with just the motor. Once you get the motor out of the fan, it should look like this. It has some power wires on this side and electronics on this side. And there's a connector here that holds it all together. And I just took a wire cutters and cut both sides and took that connector out. If you pull here, the power wires should come right through. Getting these wires pulled from here all the way through to here is a bit tricky because they're anchored right here in the middle. What I'm going to do is take a piece of wire with a hook on the end and shove it through. And then on the other end, I'll hook a piece of string, about two foot long string, and then pull it back through. And I've peeled these wires back a little bit and twisted them into a knob there. Now I'm going to take this string and form it into a noose and put it over the end of that knob. Now I'm going to use that to pull this wire back through to the other side. Now we need to reattach the electronics. Just line up all your wire colors. So there's a pink. Strip that with the wire strippers. Wind it together with the other pink and then put a wire knot on it to protect it. And you'll do that for all these other wires as well. Your white power wire gets connected to the white wire here, the black power wire gets connected to the black here, and the black and white can just be thrown away. When you have it all wired back together, there should be no wires on this side of the motor and all the electronics and the power wires on this side of the motor. There's one peculiar thing about ceiling fan motors. They're almost inside out. A normal motor has the outside stationary and the inside spins, where in a ceiling fan motor, the inside is stationary and the outside spins. So when you go to test your motor to make sure your wiring is correct, make sure you hold the inside, not the outside, or your wires will get all tangled up. It should look like this. The wheel is going to get bolted to the top of this motor so this inner spindle is in the way and no longer needed since I pulled the wires through so I'm just going to take a hacksaw and cut that off. It would be a really good idea to have a vacuum running while you do this so that none of the metal shavings get into the motor. Next we'll make the grinding wheel out of 6 inch PVC, two end caps, and a bunch of stainless steel screws. I want to line these two up exactly, so I'll drill a 5 16 inch hole right there to match that. We need to make a template that shows where all these bolt holes are, so I'll lay a piece of paper on top of the motor and color until I find the bolt holes. Put the template on the plastic cap, line it up, and color in all the spots. I'm only going to use five screws, so I'll only use one hole from each pair. I need to cut this hole a little bit bigger so it doesn't rub on this inner spindle. Now let's bolt it on. Now we need to cut a six inch piece of pipe to connect these two. And put it all together like this. We'll use a caster wheel like this for the grinder wheel bearing. I'm going to remove this wheel by cutting away the axle pin. Now I'll drill a hole in the center of the other cap, put in the caster bearing, and bolt it on from the back side with a washer. Here's the first test of our apple mashing wheel. The grinder wheel is going to be mounted between two boards like this, so I'm going to need something to keep the apples on the wheel and away from the motor and the bearing. I'm going to use one of our leftover buckets on this side cut to about three and a half inches and one on this side cut to about three quarters of an inch. So this comes back off. I'll drill a centering hole in the bucket, use my paper template to mark the holes, and drill them. Now I'm going to cut out this thick center section so it doesn't interfere with this. 
So now this covers the motor and this gets screwed back in place. So on this end, this comes out and this is supposed to replace it, but it really warped for some reason. So I just cut a piece of plexiglass the same size. Now I'll make a four-sided box out of two by tens. So here's our box and the grinding wheel. It's higher on this side, so I'm gonna cut a slot in the wood and sink this bearing down a little bit. I'll put screws here and here to hold the motor in place. And screws here and here to hold the bearing in place. We'll use a four inch PVC cap to cover the fan electronics. I drilled a hole here for the pull chain. I cut a slot here for the cord to go out. And I drilled a hole here for the mounting screw. Stuff all the electronics in and mount it. Now we're ready to put some teeth on this grinding wheel, which are going to be these stainless steel screws that will be screwed all the way in to where only the head is sticking out. Now we want to put them evenly on the wheel, so I've cut a piece of paper that wraps nicely around the wheel, like this. 17 screws fit across the drum. I'll start making my pattern by marking the centers here, 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 and here. Now using these two centers, mark the center in the middle of the page. Now draw a line from the center point out to one corner. Now slant your ruler the other way and draw a line from the side center point to the bottom center point. Now I'm spacing my 17 screws roughly evenly along these lines. Now carefully take them off one at a time and mark where they go. Wrap your paper back around your wheel and tape it on. As you spin it, it should look like the grinding teeth are always moving towards the center. Using a drill bit that's roughly the same size as the very inner shank of your screw, drill all your holes, tear off your paper, and put in the screws. Next we'll need a chute that guides the apples into the grinder. I've cut a board that fits just between the two sides, and I'm going to bring it down at an angle as low as the bottom of this bucket and then tilt it up here and mount it with a hinge. With the hinge makes my chute movable. I want to adjust this gap right down here exactly. So I'll drill a hole back here and put in a lag bolt. Now I'll tighten it up until the gap is just right. So this bolt keeps this board from going down this way, but there's really nothing to keep it from coming up this way. So what I'm gonna do is use this little cinching device that allows you to tighten or loosen these two hooks and then put eyelets in the back of the box here and then also on the board there so I can essentially tie this down and pull the board tight. So there you can see it's nice and stable with the bolt holding it in from the back and this cinching screw holding it down in front. Let's take a closer look at the slope of this input chute. If you have a small apple or a small chunk, this works well because it literally gets caught right there and that's what grinds up the apple. If, however, your apple is more this size, what tends to happen is the screw comes down and doesn't have enough bite and it just pushes this up and it bounces. Ideally, more of a sloped chute like this gives apples a lot of different places to get caught. We can easily approximate this with a few blocks of wood and it has the added benefit of having corners that the apples can get caught on. There are a few finishing touches. I cut off this extra board. I bent one of the bucket handles into this shape, drilled little holes on either side of the chute so I could stick in the handle, screwed some curved bucket plastic onto a 1x4, put four screws like this on either side, so this whole thing slides in as a much needed splash shield. I made a little tray out of one of the buckets and put screws here and here to hold it in place. And now we're ready to grind.